afternoon, Carl. Happy Hi. birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you for the cakes. How You're did welcome. you spend it? And uh, if you can tell us what maybe your birthday wish was. Well, I spent it with my family. I went back home to my hometown, San Sebastian, and I had all the family there with me. So it was a, a really weird way of celebrating it. A little wish, maybe, that there's a... It's a secret. It's a secret. You can imagine it, but it's a secret. <laughs> I guess if you if you tell us, then it maybe doesn't come true. So who knows? <laughs> um, let's come to matters ahead of tomorrow. And we spoke to you before the international break, and you talked about William Saliba knowing more in the next little while. How is he progressing? He is progressing. Unfortunately, he has still some discomfort in his back, and um, we are trying to manage in the best possible way. Um, unfortunately, he's not going to be fit for this game, and um, we are trying. He's trying to do everything he can to to feel better and get him back training, but uh, not yet. There's a few scare stories around that it might be end of season. That's I know you don't like to put a time on it, but you're hopeful of seeing him before then. Yeah, I am very hopeful, and he is as well. Um, back injuries are a bit tricky, how they evolve with the load that you put uh, as well in certain areas, but um, he's very positive about it. Medical staff are positive about it. Let's push it every day a little bit and, and see how he can cope with that and how the pain develops as well. And he's so obviously so willing to, to be back with the team. We saw Thomas Party training yesterday, having missed that game and having had your physio alongside, uh, mm. alongside him. Is he okay? And the fact that you had kind of a physio with him, I guess, gives us a sense of just how important he is to you and what you want to do over the next few weeks. Yes, but it's something that we did in the past as well, and uh, we have a really good relationship with the uh, Ghanaian Federation, and um, and we have to manage and um, and look after our players, and um, they've been really positive about it as well. We try to help as much as possible, and, um, and I think it works both ways, you know. And obviously, he wasn't fit enough to play the second game, but um, hopefully, he's going to be back uh, for the weekend. And everyone else good after internationals. I mean, was he hot in the mouth? <coughs> Rodri going for that tackle on Odegaard. These things happen in, in football when they play against each other, but uh, the rest of them are, are all good. Okay, and um, another Manager of the Month award for you, your fourth of the season, I think it is. Um, lots of highlights in March, but one of the things you're most proud of is, is how you overcame that sort of blip a, a few weeks before. For sure, and um, and we needed results, we needed performances, and, and we got the results in in various ways. Uh, some games we had to really react and uh, and push ourselves to the limit to to get the <coughs> results. In other ones, we were really dominant. Okay, <laughs> we were really really dominant, and uh, and we won the game with. Um, with a bigger gap, so we have to continue to, to do that every single day to try to, to play better and, um, and against Leeds it's going to be the same case. Uh, and the moment of March for you, which, which moment was it? The moment of March? Yeah. Moment, maybe? Yeah, probably the goal of reason, that moment and that celebration, that hype that we all had um, in that moment, but uh, I'm especially pleased with the consistency that the boys are showing every single day, you know, to the way they train, the way they behave, the way they are playing, um, to have that willingness and that hunger to, to keep winning and winning and winning. Um, earlier this week you did a piece that I looked back on this morning and a lot of the themes through it was the unity, togetherness, um, enjoying what they're doing. Yeah. When you look at this group now and, and you think back to some of your most unified dressing rooms that you're in, which ones were there and how far as a group did it manage to take you? <coughs> sorry, sorry, can so you? The most unified dressing rooms that you've been part of and how far that kind of group yeah. that really loved each other and bought into what you were doing, how far did it take you? I don't know, I wouldn't like to compare it, honestly. I think it's, I'm extremely proud and happy to, to have and develop the group of players and the staff that we have together. And it's an absolute joy um, to work with them every single day. And, uh, and just push every boundary, every limit, um, enjoy the challenge that we have ahead of us. It's the most beautiful part of the season, and we need to enjoy every second, every single day of it. And, um, and this is what we talk about every single day. I didn't want you to compare, but I just wondered which of your dressing rooms you've kind of taken inspiration from, those really tight units that you sort of sit here now when you look at what's ahead of you and think, that was amazing, I, you know, 
that was the most unified <laughs> place that I've been? Um, I don't know. Probably it's the one that I was when I was 15 years old and I was in Barcelona and I, we had 13, 14, 15 year old boys and then some of them they've been incredibly successful football players. But we have to look after each other in a way. And it was not only in the dressing room because we lived together as well and we all had our own issues, but as well our own hobbies and our way of of being and uh, that was phenomenal. That was probably the biggest learning curve that I had in my career in football to after try to take certain bits and um, and experiences to take on board uh, in your professional career. Charlie. Mikel, you mentioned the winner of Bournemouth. Leeds, of course, are another team fighting against rele relegation. Uh, what are the challenges we face a team fighting against relegation, but particularly at this time of the season? Well, in particular Leeds, I think they have very clear DNA, you know, how they are, how they behave, the character, um, that passion and energy that they play with, you know, and uh, they've been doing it <laughs> for a long, long time. And now with a new manager as well, with some new ideas, some players that they've been injured as well, which they have some issues with, they are back right now. So a very dangerous team that uh, we discussed that openly and very clearly what we're going to expect tomorrow and, uh, and we're going to have to be really good to beat them. You mentioned Javi Garcia. I mean, what have you made of the, the work that he's done at the club? Really good. And I know him as a player because he used to play in my hometown really, really well. And now as a coach, and he's a really good coach, really dedicated, really thoughtful, very clear in the ideas that his team wants to play. Um, he can vary as well, like he's done in many clubs, his way of playing and formations, very adaptable. He's coached so many teams already, you know, at his age, and, and that says you the quality that he has, and I think so far he's doing really well. Uh, one on Gabriel Jesus, of course, he's had the international break to get fully fit, but are you now seeing him at 100%? He's very close to that. In the last uh, 10 days, he's really made a, a big step forward. Um, you can see that he's looser, he's not thinking about it. Uh, you can see that he's already creating and turning the chaos that he's capable of creating and this unique moment. So he's in a really good place now. And one final one away from the game uh, tomorrow. Uh, you were at the Emirates Stadium to watch Arsenal women beat Bayern Munich. Yeah. How proud are you of their achievement, but also what Arsenal are doing as a club, both the men's and women's team? It was beautiful. It was great uh, to just uh, have the experience to leave it um, there and uh, and the crowd that that we had in the game and especially the way they played you know especially in the first half it was a, a real joy to watch so it's a big achievement you know it hasn't happened for for many many years at the club so we have to catch them up um, and this is the the beauty of it you know that getting things inside the club that are inspiring for each other and uh, and they can make us closer and, and better with um, with intentions and the objectives that we have at the end of the season thank you Hi, Mikel. Hope you're well. You were mentioning about consistency in one of your answers. But Kaya Saka has been so consistent for you this season. Played so well for England against Ukraine recently. I mean, what do you put his consistent performances this season down to? First of all, his mentality. I think there's been a shift there. Um, how much he wants it, what he does every single day. And then, obviously, the, the maturity. Um, the acknowledgement of what to do in every situation, that his decision making is getting better and better and better. He's deciding football matches more often. Um, and as well because he has really good teammates, both at Arsenal and at the national team. And that's a very necessary thing to have, especially when you play in, in attacking positions. Arsene Wenger has been inducted into the Premier League Hall of Fame this week. How deserved is that for you? No question. He had to be there. And, and I'm so proud. Uh, of him, so proud to, to have been part of his career um, as a player, what he's done for the club, what he's done for, for football in general. It's, it's someone exceptional that, uh, that deserves a, a huge place in, in the football world. Do you still speak to him much or will you look to speak to him over the coming weeks as we go into to the running? Yeah, we are in touch. Um, you know that he's been trying to stay away and this is the way he is and we are trying to bring him back closer and closer and I think we have made some very important steps there and uh, and his influence is going to be there and someday he's present is enough. And lastly for me, just picking up on the women's team success as well, how important is that for both the men's and the women's team are both fighting for, for trophies this season in terms of what you're trying to do in here at, at Arsenal? And that tells you what this club is about. It's about winning and, and, and bringing the major trophies uh, to the club. 
And that's the ambition that every single person that works in this organization has to have. So it's uh, very inspiring, um, and especially the way they're doing it. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. How has this international break been? Has it been an opportunity to pause and, and reflect and get ready, or is it something you could have done without because Arsenal were going really fast when it came? Uh, we had time to work. The days that we had to work, we have time to analyse and um, and think and get away and reflect on what we are doing and, and how we're going to approach the final push of the season. Um, and then as well some time to fool your heart with your loved ones and spend some time with them and, uh, and get a different type of energy that is very needed. Uh, so, so far, it was, it was really good. Excellent. Um, when you prepare for Leeds and a team that are, that are battling, and I know Arsenal generally focus on themselves, they don't worry about who they're playing. How much does that kind of intrude in your preparations, the fact that you know, Leeds are in this desperate situation and, and will, will you know, be fighting on every front? Yeah, they won the points uh, as much as we won them. Uh, hopefully we won them more than them and we can show that uh, on Saturday. But obviously it's a team that has its needs and that they are playing, I think, at a really good level and they got a really good result, the last one. And, um, and we're going to have to end, like we always done, um, our right to win the game. On, on the subject of changes, you know, at this point in the season, with no Saliba, you know, Rob Holden coming in, how much do you have to kind of manage that alteration in the way your team's working? Do you just say to them, you know, you're all professionals, you've got to get on with it, or do you have to sort of really kind of prepare for the fact that this team that hasn't changed much yeah. is now going to change it? We try to adapt uh, the qualities with the players um, to get the best out of the team, as simple as that. And sometimes the character, sometimes the quality of the player. So in every phase, we try to, to get them in, in the most comfortable position that they can deliver the best for the team. Rob has huge experience already at the club uh, in the Premier League, and, um, and I think he proved that in, in the right way in the last game against the Palace. Thank you. Hi. If Manchester City, they're playing before you, if they drop points against Liverpool, that potentially gives you the opportunity to open up a 10 or 11 point gap at the top of the Premier League table. Will your players be watching the game before or would you rather they're just focused on what they're doing going into the game? Our focus is in what we can control ourselves every single day. But uh, obviously, we love to watch football games and for sure there's going to be a part there when, if we can, that we will be watching it like any other manager or, or team because we love to watch games and, and this is a, a great game to watch. So you're not going to try and keep your players from keeping an eye on the City game? just. Yeah. Well, there's still a little bit of gap between the game, but when we get to the game, the, the focus is in the game and, and nothing else and everybody is just switch on, on on what we're going to do. Just going back to Sleeper quickly, was, um, was that an injury he'd kind of been managing building up to the, the game or was it just one that happened fresh against Sporting? <laughs> No, it's something that happened. We don't know if it happened the previous game because he had uh, a very awkward landing uh, against Fulham. Um, but before that, he was he was fine. When, when you say you're kind of still assessing and trying to work it out, is it because, I mean, why is that? How, how come you don't know right now the exact extent of the injury? Is it just a really difficult one? To Maybe more for the doctors that, are, that answer, but it's more specific about the area and, and the load that really puts in, in that area, how he can cope with that and, and what kind of... Uh, pain he can handle and where are the risks as well if, if we make it worse and, and that's what we have to be aware yeah, of. Um, Conor and Balogun have an interest in international break. He head over to the States, they kind of laid the red carpet out for him over there. Gareth Southgate was talking about him, kind of urged him to be patient in terms of possible England chance. What, what would your advice be to following at the moment given the decision that he's weighing up over his international future? To focus on today and continue to do what he's been doing because he's been phenomenal. So keep doing what you are doing and don't think about anything else. And the rest of the things would come naturally. Do you worry that could sort of sway his mind if you're thinking too much that would affect the work he's doing this season? I wouldn't personally. I would I would try to, to do what he's been doing because he's been working really well for him and for the team. So continue to do the same thing. James? Well, I was pretty young, <laughs> obviously, at, at a certain stage, especially when he was uh, he was at the club. But um, it's a juicy painting, you see picture. You have a lot of people that uh, has come across with him. Huge character, very charismatic person. Um, someone that he was very much loved at the at the club. So 
um, yeah, great uh, that players, clubs are remembering that day and, and feel like it's something special. That's fine, right, Mikael. On, on Saliba, you mentioned um, he's, he's, he's something you might have to manage. Do you see that potentially being a, a thing over the rest of the season? Though? He might come back, but it might be an injury. You have to keep an eye on for the rest of the season. Then. I want to be positive and think that he's going to be able to do that. Uh, but I don't know. I don't have the the answer today to 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 answer hundred percent whether that's going to be the case. And you mentioned Bakayo earlier on in one of your answers. With the way he's playing for you, with the way he's playing for England at the moment, are there, are there any players in his position in more form, in better form at the moment? Do you think? I don't know. We try to assess the players that we have, and he's in an exceptional form. He's full of confidence. He's physically in the right condition, and. Uh, and he's providing to the team exactly what he needs, so he needs to continue to do that. Is, is he surprised the consistency he has given his age? Because there are a lot of young players that we see fluctuate at his age, but the consistent levels must be surprising even to you. Yeah, but I think that's getting better and better, and uh, there are a lot of things that he's doing uh, to try to maintain that consistently. It's, it's his habits, every single day, what he does, how he talks to himself, you know, how he allows people to give him advice in the right moment, how he pushes himself, the people he's got around him. They are all very, very important factors for someone to be that consistent every day. And just finally, you touched on the women's game. I just wondered what you made specifically of the, of the Freedom Manum goal. Because uh, got quite a few fans out of the seat, didn't you? Beautiful. It was the, the moment the, the ball left uh, her feet. We knew that it was coming in, so it's just uh, a beautiful finish. Thanks, um, Scottish accent, so I hope you're still used to it. But yeah. um, just staying on the, the soccer um, for a moment, you know, um, he's playing so much football just now at the top of his game. Were you comfortable with the amount of minutes he played at England? And did you speak to any of your international <laughs> managers about managing the minutes? Because they obviously know what's on the line here at, at club level. Well, the players that are fit uh, have to be ready to play at international level. They had two important games. B is becoming more and more important there and you have to fulfill your role and your role gets bigger and you have to be able to fulfill that role and that's what he did. And you've spoken a lot about changing the culture at the Emirates, making it a positive environment. There's so much hope just now with ten cup finals if, if, if you've classed it towards the end of the season. Do you have you got a message for your fans with these games where if it's a pressure environment the last half an hour of games it's still on mm -hmm. the line to trust the process and you know, stick with the way the team are playing? Yeah, to live the day, to enjoy the day, to push on the day and to give us all the energy that they have on the day. And the rest will come in the next game, in the next day. And uh, that's what we are going to do. Give a real push every single day to be at our best. So with their help, with their support, we are much better as a team. And uh, that's all we are asking for. Nothing different to what they've done the whole season for us. Do you feel that the fans are well educated, that they, know, they won't become impatient if games are going to take longer, it's not going to be done in the first half now. Today, what we do, we do today. And uh, our message is to them, what we perceive from them every single day, because it's not only what we eat, as well as what we read, what the players read. So all those positive messages, all that feeling of, of support, of energy or enthusiasm for the day to come and enjoy actually what is coming, that's the most beautiful thing to do, and that gives you energy, and that fills everything, your desire to play in front of them. And once we are now on those 96 minutes to play for, that they really stand out and, and they're really behind the team to inspire them.